Ilya Teporia defeated Alexander Volkanovsky with a punch so hard that it looks like it actually sent one of Volk's teeth flying out of his mouth. And in this video, we're gonna do a little bit of some fight anatomy and fight science and talk about what happened here. Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Brian Suter and my goal in this channel is to help teach you about the medical side of the sports world. Now, people seem to really like these fight breakdowns, these kind of anatomy breakdowns. So let's talk a little bit here about this knockout with Toporia and Volkanovski. Now, we're gonna throw back a little bit also to the Paulo Costa fight because there was some comparisons with why that head kick that he delivered to Whitaker might not have knocked out Whitaker, but what we see here with Volkanovski and Toporia did cause a knockout. So this whole sequence, I think, gets started much sooner before we see this actual final knockout blow. And it's initially this first little left that comes in here from Teporia that kind of catches Volkanovsky off guard. We see him start to stumble a little bit. You know, whenever we talk about being able to protect or guard from a head injury, a concussion, part of that is the ability to fire your neck muscles, to stabilize and try and prevent how much rotational energy you're seeing transferred through the head and through the brainstem and into the brain. So in instances like this, Volkanovsky has his eyes closed and doesn't really see when this punch is going to land. And so that's gonna cause less preparedness of those muscles, less ability to guard and protect from that punch, more likely to have a higher impact. We get a great view of some back anatomy with the musculature here on Toporia. Of course, we see the trapezius muscles right down here. We're going to see a little bit of these external rotators of the rotator cuff, the infraspinatus, the teres minor, two muscles that are important with externally rotating the shoulder. And then of course, we're going to see the lats coming down here as well, a little bit of posterior deltoid. And both of these punches from Toporia the way that he transfers the energy is more rotation through his body rather than a straight punch or a jab because he delivers both of these punches with his elbow essentially in a stable flex position. So he's got his elbow locked rigid. As he rotates through, he delivers all this energy with that locked elbow. We see here he starts up. We look at this angle here and his left elbow it stays pretty consistent all the way through this punch. And it's all the rotation of his core that action of his left arm adducting from outside to in coming across his body that delivers all that blow to Volkanovski. Now, as we get to the actual knockout blow, I want you to observe just the sequencing of movements starting with Teporia's lower body up into his trunk, ending with that right short hook coming around to the side. Because remember, this is all rotational energy. This is not just a straight power punch or something like a head kick. This is how he's able to sequence this energy starting from down at the ground, up through his hips, up into that arm. One of the first things we see here is we see that knee turn inward. We see that knee go inward. We see the hips start to rotate as he's bringing his body and rotating around, crunching down towards that left side, swinging that right arm around. So in this case, Tapori is relying on that rotational transfer of energy starting down from the hip, rotating inward, his obliques firing, pulling his core down this way as his body swings up around to deliver that energy that starts down in his legs, coming inward, hip rotating around, and then that short right hitting Volkanovski. Next, we're gonna talk about some physics and momentum with how exactly Volkanovski got knocked out here and also relay it to Whitaker and Costa. But first, I wanna give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video. Today's video is sponsored by Magic Spoon. As a kid, I loved sitting down with that big bowl of sweet cereal, watching cartoons on a Saturday morning. But as an adult trying to maintain a better lifestyle, it's a little bit hard to do that. Magic Spoon is cereal reinvented. It's the same great taste that we all remember growing up with, but with much better ingredients, higher protein and less sugar. It has zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, four to five grams of net carbs per serving and just 140 calories. And even if higher protein is not your main focus, Magic Spoon fits a variety of different lifestyles. Their variety pack comes in four fantastic flavors. They've got frosted, peanut butter and fruity, and finally, cocoa. My personal favorite is the peanut butter. It tastes fantastic and I don't have to feel guilty eating it. Even if I'm just sitting here watching a game at the end of the day, it makes a fantastic snack. Scan the QR code or go to magicspoon.com slash brianmd to get your variety pack today. Make sure you use code brianmd to get $5 off. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed by a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. So bring that cereal you loved as a kid into the 21st century and scan this QR code or click the link below, code BRIANMD to get $5 off a Magic Spoon variety pack. Thank you again to Magic Spoon for sponsoring today's video and let's get back to our learning. Now, like many people, I was stunned that this kick from Costa did not knock out Whitaker or seem to bother him more. But I think part of it is because of the principles of how momentum is conserved. Whenever two bodies collide, there's conservation of momentum. And the momentum is a combination of 
the mass and the velocity. And the velocity is directional. It's dependent on if you're going towards or away from the object. So here with Whitaker, as this kit comes in, he's moving backwards. And so of course, Costa's leg is coming in this way, but Whitaker is moving in the opposite direction. And so there's not going to be as much momentum that has to get transferred because Whitaker is able to move backwards as this hit comes in. So yes, it still is a very violent, a very vicious hit, but the fact that Whitaker is moving backwards, there's not going to be as much potential energy that can be transferred into the brain resulting in the concussion. If we compare that though to what happened with Volkanovsky, we're going to see the exact opposite. Here, I'm not sure if it was because Volkanovsky was trying to move away from another potential little left hook, but what do we see but Volkanovsky's head go into directly where Toporia's fist is coming. And so in this case now, Volkanovsky's head, he has momentum going in this direction, velocity coming inward, combined with the momentum of Toporia's fist coming in from this side. And so that's going to result in a more violent transfer of energy to Volkanovsky that we can see from that sudden quick rotation of his head. And remember, all that energy is getting transferred from the fist into the bones of the skull and the face, and then causing this rotational force within the brain, which then triggers the sequence of events that lead to Volkanovsky, just in this case, completely dropping and his body just basically totally shutting off from that concussion, from that head injury. But it's in part, again, because of how you've got Volkanovsky moving into the hit, of course, not intentionally, the punch coming in, there's going to be more momentum there that's going to get transferred into Volkanovsky's brain, making it more likely for this to be a bigger knockout. Now, finally, let's talk about the tooth because this is something we don't see too often in the sports world. As we back this up a little bit, this little white guy right here seems like it could possibly be a tooth that has flown out of Volkanovsky's mouth. Now, what do you do if you have a tooth knocked out, whether it's in a combat sport or something else? First of all, ideally, if you can, if it's the whole tooth, you might actually try and put it back up in its location because you don't want the ends of that tooth to die before you can potentially re-implant it at a dentist's office. The alternative, you can get specific tooth saver kits where you can put it in basically a calcium solution to help again try and maintain the integrity of that tooth. If you don't have that, put it in some milk. If you don't have any milk, at least put it in the mouth, try and keep it moist before you get to the hospital so that potentially the tooth can be saved. But I would be worried here about Volkanovsky potentially losing a tooth just because of how violent of a lip blow this is that came in, hitting Volkanovsky square there on the jaw. Now I think this was low enough that we're probably not worried about anything like a facial fracture. Of course, the zygomatic bone is gonna be sitting right up about in this area. It looks like the punch comes in a little bit lower, so not directly in the orbit to be as concerned about an orbital fracture. The final thing I'll touch on here is just again, how effective Toporia's punches are with how he's able to maintain this rigidity as he's rotating. One way, of course, that you can get power is from that extension of the arm, right? You go to a flex position with the bicep tricep, you extend firing the triceps out, and that helps you to deliver that impact from the punch. But here again with Taporia, it's all rotation. And in order for you to be able to effectively transfer that energy, you have to stay very rigid. Whenever this impact comes in, he has to do a really good job of making sure that he's contracting his core to stay solid. He has to make sure that he's contracting both his tricep and his bicep. So this is going to be an isometric contraction of both the agonist and antagonist muscle to not allow that arm to either bend or straighten out. Because as soon as it starts moving and giving when you have the impact to Volkanovsky, you're going to lose some of that energy, some of that momentum that you're trying to transfer inward. And so he has to be extremely stable and rigid as this blow comes in to make sure that the maximum amount of power is being transferred. And that's what he's so effective at, is that maximal power transfer is what makes these lower amplitude, quicker velocity types of punches have so much efficacy because he can maintain that transfer of that power. So that's it for the video, everybody. Let me know as always any questions or comments down below. Again, keep letting me know if you guys like these, you don't like these, if it becomes repetitive or you wanna hear something different in regards to these kind of fight science breakdowns. Thank you as always for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.